Those geese, um, they're almost on campus. I see them, see them every day as I come in and out. There's loads of them, isn't there? Um, right, this week, we've talked about the lymphatic system in the past, and the other week I was talking about the lymphatics of the lungs to some students. It's kind of always a bit that I try and cram into the end of a session. So I thought, let's do a video talking about the lymphatic drainage of the lungs. This won't be an in-depth, comprehensive clinical thing. It'll be a general anatomical overview of as much as we think we know about the lymphatics of the lungs. Um, we're gonna be using pipe cleaners and Play-Doh, <laughs> right? Because these models rarely have the lymphatics on them, so we're gonna have to add them. First of all then, a bit of theory. Okay, so um, lungs, you know what lungs are for? Uh, you probably even got a fairly good idea of how they work. Now, the lungs, we, we feed a load of blood into the lungs, we feed a load of blood out of the lungs. <gasps> and we pull a lot of air into the lungs, we push a lot of air out of the lungs. So the main job of the lungs is gaseous exchange. Now, oxygen and carbon dioxide are soluble in water. Um, we need to get the oxygen from the air that we inhale. Um, across cell membranes into the blood and we need to do the opposite with the CO2, right? So we need fluid in the lungs for gaseous exchange to occur because we want to dissolve those gases, uh, diffuse them across uh, into, the, into and out of the blood and blah, 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 blah. Robert's your father's brother, right? Um, so we need some fluid in the lungs. And like other tissues in the body, all the tissues in the body need a bit of fluid. Um, we have and there are also bronchial arteries going into the lungs as well. We've got the pulmonary arteries and the pulmonary veins. Essentially, we have fluid from capillaries leaking into the lungs. And the lungs are not just alveoli and bronchial tubes. There's also connective tissue holding all this stuff together and then visceral pleura on the outside. So there's fluid leaking from these capillaries into the connective tissues of the lungs, supporting this whole process of gaseous exchange. Now, normally, it's somewhat the responsibility of the lymphatic system to take any excess fluid and pull that back into the circuitry system. That's what the lymphatic system as a whole does. I tend to describe it as having three jobs. That's one of its jobs. Go and have a look at that video. God knows what I talked about in that video. I don't know. Um, but we want to try and maintain a little bit of fluid in the lungs. I think it's like half a litre, something like that. Um, but not too much. And the lymphatic system then, that's its role, is, is, is managing the amount of fluids. We have fresh fluid going in and we have fluid going off the lungs. We keep it nice and clean, pick up lots of bits and bobs. So the lymphatic system can then do its other immune roles and that sort of thing. But that's, that's getting off topic already. There are two plexuses, two collections, two layers or groups of lymphatic vessels draining lymph from the lung. The lymphatic vessels, they start, remember the lymphatic system is a one-way thing, it's not a closed circuitry loop, so there are, you know, the, um, the, the ends of the lymphatic vessels start in the connective tissues of the lung, in the parenchyma, and they're draining fluid from there. Um, and there's a superficial network, a superficial plexus of lymphatic vessels, and then there's a deep um, plexus or network of lymphatic vessels. Now the superficial plexus, the superficial network of lymphatic vessels is just deep to the visceral pleura. So it's draining the visceral pleura and it's draining that layer of connective tissue of the, of the lungs, you know, deep to that. Um, that gets called the uh, superficial plexus or superficial network or the uh, subpleural plexus or the visceral pleural network. So you might come across a number of different names, but essentially we're talking about this superficial network of lymphatic vessels. And then there's this deep, this deeper network of lymphatic vessels and they tend to be more associated with, with the airways. Um, so these get called the, the deep lymphatic plexus or network or the bronchopulmonary a network of lymphatic vessels or the peribronchovascular network of lymphatic vessels. You might come across a number of different descriptions, but essentially they're talking about kind of a superficial group and then a deep group. And that deep group of lymphatic vessels is draining um, the 
tissues of the airways, you know, the bronchial bits, but also the connective tissues between the bronchial bits. So you can see that it's a bit, it's a bit deeper, right? Um, and between different lymphatic vessels and between those two networks, there are quite a lot of anastomoses, um, but they drain to lymph nodes. Of course, the lymph nodes are um, small structures with a fairly tough connected tissue capsule filled with a network of fibers and a lot of lymphatic vessels or a number of lymphatic vessels, vessels will drain to a lymph node. The lymph will pass through the lymph node. Because of that network of fibers, it'll filter out any bits, any particles, um, and they'll be presented to immune cells that live in the lymph nodes and macrophages will pick them up and that sort of thing. And as we go through a group of lymph nodes, we tend to have a lot of lymphatic vessels going into a lymph node and then a single um, lymph lymphatic vessel going from the lymph node onto the next lymph node onto the next vessel. So we have a lot of, it's probably a very rich network of lymphatic vessels within the lung. And as we get closer to the hilum, so the, so the, the lymph is all going to drain towards the, the hilum of the lung here, because that's how stuff gets in and out of the lung, right? Um, they pass through a number of lymph nodes and they get simpler and simpler. Okay, so what about those lymph nodes then? That's what the Play-Doh is for. Okay, so the flow is back towards the hilum of the lung. Now, if we take out the heart and the vessels, we can see a little bit better. Um, the, the first lymph nodes that vessels will encounter are the pulmonary lymph nodes. What should we do? Should we do blue? And um, these pulmonary lymph nodes tend to be associated, they're quite, oh, how well are you going to stick? Are you going to stick? You're not going to stick. You're going to stick to me better than to the thingy. These pulmonary lymph nodes tend to be nearby the bronchial tree. And of course, the number of lymph nodes will vary. Um, the size of the lymph nodes will vary. Um, and the lymphatic system as a whole is quite variable. Where can I stick that one? Up there? That's a bit far away, isn't it? In there? Boop. So those would be the pulmonary lymph nodes, right? Um, and it's the, the deep lymphatic vessels that are going to encounter the pulmonary lymph nodes. As we get closer to the hilum, uh, orange, we find um, what tend to get called bronchopulmonary lymph nodes. They also get called hyla lymph nodes because they're at the hilum. So that might be a bit easier to remember. So these are in orange. That's never going to stick under there. These are the hyla or bronchopulmonary lymph nodes. Imagine these in 3D. There's more than this and they come out a little way. Now, these are the lymph nodes we often see when we're dissecting the cadaver. We take the lung out and we might see out of the hilum of the lung some, some black things. And those black things are likely to be lymph nodes that have slowly accumulated particles of dust, particles of black matter, probably grabbed by macrophages that have then got stuck in the lymph nodes, right? So over many, many years and decades of all this pollution that we're breathing in that we don't notice, it does collect in our lungs. Us anatomists, we see it regularly. But these bronchopulmonary high nodes, nodes are the ones we tend to see. Now, the deep lymphatic vessels from the pulmonary nodes will then drain to the bronchopulmonary nodes. And the superficial network of lymphatic vessels underneath the pleura, they're also going to drain probably directly to these bronchopulmonary lymph nodes. But don't forget there are lots of anastomoses and links between these vessels. Okay, so now we're going to follow the airway back up. So from the bronchopulmonary lymph nodes, then we have green lymph nodes, tracheobronchial lymph nodes. Uh, are you going to stick for me? Go on. Oh, please stick. We have go on. inferior tracheobronchial lymph nodes, which also get called carinal lymph nodes because they're at the carina. That's where the trachea splits into the two main bronchi. And then we have superior tracheobronchial lymph nodes, right? It's getting a bit high, that one, isn't it? Um, now, the lymph from a lung will usually drain to the lymph nodes on the same side. There's an ipsilateral thing going on. And this, of course, is important when we consider lung cancer and how cancers of the lung might spread to lymph nodes and into the mediastinum and into the thorax. But 
It's also known that different lobes of the lung will drain a little differently and there is some crossover. So some of the lymph from one side of the body can cross over to the lymph nodes on the opposite side of the body. All these things are linked by a plexus of lymphatic vessels that I'm not making out of Play-Doh, right? So the two sides do connect. So there is some knowledge, although it's not hard and fast, about which nodes of the, which uh, lobes of the lung will drain, as in, so if you have a cancer in a different lobe of the lung, which lymph nodes that cancer might travel to. Right, so from the carinal lymph nodes, from the inferior and superior tracheobronchial lymph nodes, the lymph continues up either side of the trachea, passing through paratracheal or paratracheal lymph nodes. And these are lymph nodes on either side of the trachea. These lymph nodes are getting bigger. That's just me, my play -Doh. They don't not necessarily get actually bigger. Now, um, if you remember your lymphatics within the thorax, there's the thoracic duct, which is a major duct running from the cisterna chile um, in the posterior abdomen, sorry, the posterior thoracic wall, and it's gonna drain back into the venous system here, right? Uh, thoracic duct. Uh, um, well, it's it's, it's 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 coming from down there. Oh, you can see how much planning goes into this, can't you? Oh, it's going, it's going. Oh, it go on a bit further. So that's the thoracic duct. This is the internal jugular vein. There's the subclavian vein. This is the left side of the body. The thoracic duct is running up the posterior thoracic wall and it's gonna drain lymph from the lower limbs, the pelvis, the abdomen, um, and kind of left parts of the thorax in, back into the circuitry system here. Now from the lungs, these, there are other major lymphatic vessels called um, bronchomediastinal lymphatic ducts, right? So these are essentially going to connect to... You've got to remember, there's a bit of artistic license going on here. This is not entirely anatomically accurate. But these lymph nodes on the left side are going to drain into the left bronchomediastinal lymphatic duct, um, lymphatic vessel, which is going to drain into the probably drain into the thoracic duct, which is then going to drain back into the circulatory system here. And the same sort of thing's happening on the right side, except there's a, a right bronchomediastinal duct. And have I got a hole there? I haven't got, I haven't, I haven't, actually, I haven't actually got a hole there, so I'm going to have to really cheat and um, wedge this down here somewhere and blob that in. Yeah, look. Brilliant, perfect, right? So the right bronchomediastinal um, lymphatic duct drains these lymph nodes, which then drains back to the right lymphatic duct, which is gonna drain back to the venous system here. There's a right lymphatic duct, which is a, usually a little duct. It's draining ducts from the right upper limb, the right head and neck, and also the right side of the thorax. So in this case, the right bronchomediastinal lymph duct, which is draining largely limp from the right lung and other bits of the thorax back into the venous system here at the, at the angle, the venous angle where the, the right subclavian vein meets the internal jugular vein on the right. All right. Yeah. So a few other notes on this, although there are quite a lot of lymph nodes on either side, because of the number of anastomoses between different plexuses and uh, vessels, it's quite likely that, that lymph from any region of the lung can actually bypass um, lymph nodes and jump to the next set of lymph nodes. So often you might find patients with lung cancer spread to kind of unexpected lymph nodes and that's actually kind of expected because of this the, the network of lymphatic vessels and everything interconnects here, right? It's not. It's not a nice, simple set of tubes. Everything's connecting from side to side and from bit to bit, all right? 
Um, also, in, in recent years, it's just becoming understood that um, lung cancer seems to be able to actually promote what gets called lymphangiogenesis. So the formation of new lymphatic vessels from existing lymphatic vessels, where so lung cancer can actually change the networks of lymphatic vessels in the lung. If we go back to pulmonary edema, um, there are a couple of other things we need to consider. We need to, when we think about the lungs, it's always good to associate the heart with the lungs. Normally, the pulmonary circulatory system within the lungs has, uh, it's a fairly low pressure. So the rate at which fluid leaks from the capillaries into the lungs is at a low rate, and the lymphatic system can cope with that. But if something, if something significant happens to the heart, like um, left ventricular failure, then the pressure inside the pulmonary system, the pulmonary circulatory system within the lungs, increases. So if you increase the blood pressure within the lungs, then you're starting to push more fluid out through the capillaries into the tissue. That's, that's startling, isn't it? Something like that. Um, so then you start putting more fluid into the lungs. Now, can the lymphatic system cope and take that extra fluid out of the lungs fast enough? If it can't, we start to get pulmonary edema. Um, and with pulmonary edema then, um, normally you have a little bit of interstitial fluid, um, which is, um, just right for oxygen and CO2 to uh, dissolve into and the oxygen just then has to diffuse a little way to get into the circulatory system and so on. But when you start putting excess fluid, extra fluid into the lungs and you start seeing pulmonary edema, you've got more interstitial fluid. The oxygen has to diffuse a little bit further across that interstitial fluid. So that process slows down and you start to see a reduction in the partial pressure of oxygen in arterial blood. Now, I think in, in chronic conditions, the lymphatic system tends to speed up and manages it, but it doesn't do so well in acute conditions. I could be completely wrong there, um, but I think that's right. Um, so you see this differently then in different patients with different conditions, right? But pulmonary edema then is associated with the heart, with the pressure of the circulatory system within the lungs, and also with the rate at which the lymphatic system um, can take fluid off the lungs. Now, of course, if it gets to extreme levels, then uh, if you get a lot of interstitial fluid in the lungs, it'll actually start to, to pass into the alveoli, and the alveoli themselves will start to fill up with fluid, which is uh, extremely dangerous, right? But there you go. The lymphatic system of the lungs, kind of, <laughs> in 3D with plasticine and um, pipe cleaners. Oh, Lord. Well, at least it's colourful, eh? Hopefully it helped. Right, remember that direction of flow, right? From the lung, through the hilum, through these collections of lymph nodes, back to the venous system up here. See you next week.